Hey everybody, welcome. So I have been talking a lot on social media about how Vibe coders should move from single page frameworks like React, Angular, and Vue to HTMX. And I've caused a lot of confusion by doing that, so obviously I need to make a video. And in this video, I am going to talk about what HTMX is and why it's a good idea <clears throat> if you're vibe coding to use HTMX based on its simplicity. Now, SPAs are very popular and they're very efficient and they have huge capabilities. I'm not denying that the capabilities of single page applications will outweigh something that you can do in HTMX. But HTMX is extremely simple. It is an extremely simple code base. It means you don't need to worry about JSON. You don't need to worry about JavaScript. You don't need to worry about TypeScript. You don't use NPM. You're not using Node Package Manager. You're literally inserting one line of code into your top level HTML pages and then serving them from the server side. And so instead of when you're vibe coding having to worry about your client side application, your database, and your server side application, you're just worrying about one thing. Your programming language that you're using to talk to the database is also the programming language that you're using to push HTML to the server. So let me talk first about why SPAs are so popular, why they're a good idea in a lot of cases, but I don't think vibe coding is actually one of them. So I'm gonna explain why you're gonna wanna uh, abandon your React, your next JS, your Vue, you, you know, and, and even your server side React, you're going to want to abandon that and go to something simpler, something that your vibe coding tool is going to understand a lot easier. So let's first talk about what is an SPA. So now this page is a template. This is a template I purchased off of monster.com. I like the way it looks and I'm somebody who likes to start with templates. I don't like starting with a blank slate and especially when I'm vibe coding, I don't want to give the vibe coding tool a lot of options about what it's going to do. So I'm going to start with a template, but you notice that this template is a multi-page template. Every time I go to it and click on something, notice that the HTML here up at the top changes. So when I go to the customers, it's customer.html. When I go to orders, it's orders.html. Projects, leads, all of these are the same thing. Now I'm running it off a local host. I'm running MAMP because I'm on a Macintosh. I'm on a Mac mini. So I'm actually, this is very, very fast. But if I was running on a server, it's very inefficient to push the entire page every time you move, for, navigate from one page to the other. And it doesn't give a really natural flow from page to page if there's this flicker or this flash when you're going from page to page. And that's where SPAs or single page applications like Angular shine. So with a single page application, most of the work and most of the rendering is being done on the client side. So on the server side, the server talks to the database, the server does the business logic, and then it sends a JSON object or a JSON array to the desktop. And then in JavaScript or TypeScript, you write it in TypeScript and that gets compiled into JavaScript and the rendering of the page is done using the JavaScript. And that gives you a really nice flow. It adds a lot of capabilities, but it also adds a lot of complexity. It adds a lot of complexity on the security side because now you've got to restrict user access on both the client and the server. And it requires you to know TypeScript, JavaScript, really understand your framework. And you're spending so much time working with the framework that you're not spending a lot of time worried about your design and worried about your functionality. So this is my multi-page application. And if I go over here to my Visual Studio code, this is kind of what it looks like. It's just all in HTML and it is all just separate pages. So my index.html over here in the menu. If I'm going to support, you notice here it goes to support.html and support.html is another page. Now, if I bring up support.html, you're gonna actually see that about the first, oh, 500 lines is identical in each of these pages. And you notice where it says the app container starts on line 430. On every one of these pages, these first 430 lines are identical. And then down here at the bottom, um, by the time you get here to the page wrapper end, all of these lines are identical. So what they're doing is they're pushing out a full HTML page 
every time you navigate from one page to another. Now let's look at the code. If we switch, I'm gonna come older over here to my HTMX version. Now this is the HTMX version of the same code. So instead of having all those different HTML files, I have one HTML file that up here has one extra line installed, which is the um, unpackaged.com, htmx.org, and then the version number. So this script here is basically putting HTMX into the top level HTML file. Now, every time I call a page now, instead of refreshing the whole thing, I'm going to use specialized tags that are part of HTMX to push what's called a partial. And if you look over here in my partials directory, you see I have all those HTML pages that were up at the highest level. They're now in my partials directory. So now what, I've, what I do is when I go to another page, I'm using the hx get command to push the partials customer.html into a target. And the target is the location on the page. And in this case, it's called um, page content. So if I look down here for the a div that's got page content in it, this is page content. Now, when when we click on one of those links, what we're doing is we're replacing everything in this div tag. Everything that's got the page content ID is going to be replaced with the content of partials. So now you might be wondering, okay, well, how does this relate to my big production application that I want to build? Well, in, the re in reality, on your server, whatever language you're using, your language of choice, you're using to serve up the partials directory. So all of these things that are in partials, when I navigate, to different pages I'm using either PHP or Go or Ruby or Rust or whatever backend language I want to use to format this HTML and push this HTML into the um, into this area called page content so let me go over here to MAMP and I'm gonna switch my directories I'm gonna go over here now if you're not using MAMP uh, it is something I highly recommend because it lets you have the entire tech stack all of your entire LAMP stack, it lets you have it on your Mac or on your PC. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna choose a different directory and I'm gonna go back to my desktop, HTMX. So now I am serving my HTML out of this other directory. Okay, so now when I come back and I come to my local host 8888, and, I refresh, and I've refreshed the page, you can see that that is what's up on the screen. And now when I go to my different pages, Notice that the URL is not changing. So I can go back, I can go to my different URLs, I can load up different things, and I, I can display my tables, but this page is not changing. And the reason it's not changing is when we look at the code now, and we look at the code base, you notice that all we're doing is we're pushing the partials out. Now in this case, let's go to something like customers. You notice that customers is only, in this case, uh, it's still 300 lines long, but compared to the original template, which was probably around 1,000 lines long. So the communications with HTMX is happening with HTML. We're not having the client format some JSON, send it to the, to send it to the client, and then have the client render it as, a, as HTML using JavaScript. We're having the server push HTML and, and we can use any language that we want to you to push the HTML and all we're doing is we're basically navigating that way so let's for instance say we wanted to do this in PHP and that's my language of choice and everybody who's been following me on social media knows that's my language of choice but you can do it in any language and now let's say I have a MySQL database behind it this customers.html could just as easily be dynamically created as customers.php. Now the difference would be instead of, let's say I have a customers page and it's got a table in it, and I have a bunch of rows that are the list of my customers. Now in something like an Angular, what I would do is I would create a JSON array of all of my customers, I would send it to the server, and then the JavaScript on the server would paint all the rows of the columns in the table based on the template that is sitting on the client side. 
in HTMX, what I'm going to do is I'm going to format it all as HTML. I'm going to build the entire table. I'm going to put all the data in the table, and then I'm going to push it out. Now, you might be thinking that that is a lot less efficient. And from a network standpoint, it is less efficient because we are pushing more data out. But from a user experience standpoint, it's pretty much the same. We're talking about high-speed internet connections these days. And so the difference between sending something that is 1K and 4K is really not going to be a big difference to the end user. So it's not really going to matter uh, from a performance standpoint that you're pushing out HTML instead of pushing out uh, JSON that you're then going to format. So overall, when you're vibe coding, this makes the entire vibe coding experience a lot easier because you're only programming in a single language plus HTMX. Now, HTMS, as you can see, there's not a lot to it. There's about six different commands, and those six different commands are everything you need to work with forms, to work with a little bit of animation, to work with all the different things that you can display in Bootstrap, and you can create really professional-looking applications with HTMX at one at a fraction of the complexity if you're than if you're using. Um, if you're using a, a spa like a React, an Angular, or a Vue. Now, there are skills that are created, and I've posted some on our uh, Vibe Templates GitHubs of skills for Claude Code and for Codex to be able to convert HTML to HTMX. And I have one system prompt for our Quen Agent CLI for, that actually is a, a, an expert HTMX coder, and it knows all the commands, and it's really good at it. Now, if you use anything, if you use Codex or you use Claude Code or you use Cursor, uh, odds are that the LLM that you're using already really understands HTMX because it's so simple. But what this really does in the long run is it makes your code base a lot smaller, uh, you don't have a lot. You don't have JavaScript, so you don't have tons of JavaScript. Now you can have JavaScript if the template you use, or you really have decided that you want to use some animated graphs or stuff like that. But it makes it a ton easier for the LLM to debug because it's really only debugging the primary language that it's programming in. It's debugging the PHP or the Golang or the Rust or the Ruby or whatever you want to code it in on the back end. It, you, your, your LLM is programming in that language. It's not being forced to program in TypeScript on the front end, Golang on the back end, a bunch of Node.js. There are no packages. So there is no NPM. You're not doing an NPM install of a bunch of packages. You're really just including that one line that includes the, uh, the framework. So you're not going to have package mismatches. You're not going to have to worry about your JSON on your client sending something or your JSON on your server sending something to the client that the client doesn't understand. None of that becomes an issue when you're programming with HTMX. Now, I am going to be releasing a lot more HTMX content, especially whether you like it or not. There's going to be a lot of PHP and HTMX because I think they really do work together. I have written Oracle applications where I have an Oracle date. Oracle database on the back end, uh, HTMX and HTML with Bootstrap on the front end. It's worked out really well for enterprise level applications. Some of the concerns people have are about scalability. Scalability is not an issue. You just add more servers. Okay. Um, you do even and even if you're worried about your network, we're talking about so little data that you're pushing. We're not talking like pushing MP4 files. We're talking about pushing little snippets or little partial of HTML that are getting pushed to the client from the server. So I think this is a really good way, especially if you're a beginner vibe coding, because it, it will not take you very long to learn how to hand debug code when you're working in a simple tech stack like HTMX and your back end of choice. So I hope that helps out with why I'm pushing HTMX so much. And uh, if you like, subscribe, do all those things, it helps me out a lot. And it'll also, uh, when my new stuff comes out, make sure you hit that little notification bell because I am about to release a bunch of PHP and HTMX with vibe coding, with Claude code skills, with the Quen skills, with the Quen system prompts that we've created for our local models and using Codex. So that'll all be, all be together. So uh, I hope to see you soon.